This is HGT 119 Electricity 2 Motor and Controls. This is week 12 and we're covering refrigeration control devices. This week assignment will support the HVC learner to understand the types of controls used in HVC industry, discover the operation of the types of controls used to turn on motors, discover safety controls for compressors and motors, understand the use of thermostats, understand the use of pressure controls, understand the use of humidistats, understand the use of airflow switches, discuss the purpose of integral controls, learn the purpose of binary controls, and learn the purpose of analog controls. Controls are used in the HVAC field to operate motors and other types of control devices. Therefore, it is critical for a technician to understand how these control devices are used and its purpose. Without controls, motors and other controlled devices will run all the time, and to operate these devices, someone needs to turn them on and off manually. However, some control devices need to operate at different speeds, volume, humidity, temperature, or pressure without an automatic control device it would be impossible to sense the changes in these variables. In refrigeration systems, control devices are used for safety and operation. Therefore, knowing the difference between the two and why it is used as either is important. Because refrigeration systems can generate high pressures, high and low pressure um, temperatures can become unsafe. Therefore, safety limit controls are used to cycle off controllers and control devices and operators. Operator controls are used to turn on and off control devices at the correct point in time. Without this automatic control device, a technician must be on hand to operate the refrigeration system at all the time during all the day. An HVC refrigeration technician must have an in-depth knowledge of controls and control devices to truly understand the operation and serviceability of HVC refrigeration equipment. Terms that the learner need to research this week is pressure switches, liquid line solenoids, time delay controls, contactors, compressors, condenser fan motors, condenser units, electronic controls, and electronic thermal expansion valves. Operating controls are used to control devices and to have automatic control. Therefore, a technician doesn't need to be there all the time to turn equipment on and turn it off manually so operator controls are automatic type controls to ease the operation of equipment. For a refrigeration system a thermostat will control the temperature inside of its cabinet. These controls can be either analog which is electric mechanical or electronic Electronic thermostats are becoming popular because it is more accurate and reliable than other types of controls. On the left side, the picture shows a electric mechanical or analog type of switch for a thermostat, and on the right side is a digital. And they both basically would do the same thing. Believe it or not, the digital thermostat is actually cheaper in cost than the electromechanical type. Refrigeration systems will use time clocks to initiate a defrost cycle to remove ice and frost from the evaporator coil. The newer types of timing circuits will be electronic timers that will have no moving parts which will allow for more reliability and fewer service issues. This time clock will control the complete operation of the electrical system for a freezer 
or refrigerator. Since commercial refrigeration systems operate year-round, during the winter, the outdoor ambient will drop to very low temperatures. Therefore, refrigeration systems that have an outdoor condensed unit must have some type of low ambient control to maintain the head pressure. A fan cycling or fan speed control is a electrical way to control the head pressure by controlling the condenser fan motor. Refrigeration systems need limit and safety controls to protect the main components. Since motors and compressors are expensive, safety controls will be wired in series with the load to protect it from unsafe conditions. High pressure controls are used mostly on commercial refrigeration systems compared to residential refrigeration systems. When the pressure on the high pressure side of the system um, is higher than normal and is operating in an unsafe pressure range, the pressure switch will open its contacts and de-energize the compressor circuit. Low pressure controls are used mostly on, also on commercial refrigeration systems compared to residential refrigeration systems. When the pressure on the low pressure side of the refrigeration system is lower than normal and is operating in an unsafe pressure range, the low pressure control will open up its contacts and de-energize the compressor circuit also. Both the high and low pressure controls will control the compressor circuit and will be wired in series to the contactor for the compressor. Many refrigeration systems will use high temperature safety controls because of the low temperature of the system will operate at. The evaporators can form ice or frost on the coil. To remove the frost of the coil, electric heaters will be used to melt the ice and frost of the coil for any reason that the heaters do not come out of the circuit when it's supposed to or build up heat too quickly building up high temperatures the high limit will be installed to protect the refrigeration system from an unsafe condition motor protection for compressors Condenser fan motors, evaporative fan motors, exhaust fan motors, makeup air fan motors, and pumps is necessary to protect the equipment from high cost repairs if the control device is not kept from operating in an unsafe condition. The compressor motor protection controls can protect the motor from uh, the compressor from overcurrent or high temperatures. And HVAC technicians understand how refrigeration systems operate to be able to un able to troubleshoot any problem with the equipment. Without a clear understanding, a technician will be only guessing at the problem and change out the wrong component. This fact is not only important for refrigeration systems, but all HVAC equipment the technician will come across. So the sequence of operation. The first call the thermostat is the circuit that cycles on and operates pretty much everything or at least the refrigeration cycle. The call of refrigeration from the thermostat will set the operation of the compressor. The defrost time clock in a freezer pretty much controls everything. So the defrost time clock will control all the components in the refrigeration system. Terminal 1 and 3 controls the defrost system. Terminals 2 and 4 controls the compressor circuit. When terminal 2 and 4 of the time clock are closed, the compressor will run. These terminals are normally close and will open during defrost. The defrost system 
will operate when the defrost time clock initiate the defrost cycle every six or eight or twelve hours. It, it is determined how the technicians set up the equipment from the beginning. So the time of the defrost is um, adjustable. Terminal 1 and 3 will close to energize the defrost heaters. These terminals are normally open and will close when the defrost is initiated. So satisfying the thermostat. So when the thermostat is satisfied it will turn off the terminals or de-energize the terminals to terminal 2 and 4 and the system will shut off at that point. Troubleshooting is based on knowing how the system operates and the purpose of all the controls and components in the system. Without this knowledge, the technician will be lost and will become a parts changer and not a technician. Understanding the sequence of operation of a refrigeration system is the first step in troubleshooting. Knowing how to read electrical diagrams will aid the technician to uh, work through electrical problems. So using the, the voltmeter to troubleshoot and reading an electrical diagram is a requirement of a HVC technician to become competent in his or her daily job. So the voltmeter will be used to check for voltage and, and resistance in the circuit, for, for open circuits, and of course for checking for short circuits. One of the most difficult things for a HVC and refrigeration technician to learn is how to eliminate unnecessary information um, as part of the operation and the, the sequence of the uh, system and concentrate on the task at hand. Using critical thinking skills is imperative for understanding the equipment sequence and interpreting electrical diagrams and focusing on the correct system problems is how good technicians become better with practice and developing these skills that needed can lead to growth as a technician and extend his career and it should be a goal of all technicians so replacing a defective component is the last portion of the troubleshooting process after you determine the problem then the HVC and refrigeration technician will need to use mechanical craftsmanship and craftsman skills to replace a defective component in a HVC system. So during preventive maintenance inspections on a refrigeration system, the technician need to check all controls for deterioration of the contacts and of the mechanical linkages. For smaller type controls, replacement of the, the complete control is preferred than repairing. However, on larger commercial type controls, servicing and replacing of components of the defective parts can be done. Summarizing this week's assignments and lesson and presentation includes, since refrigeration maintains product and not people, different controls are used to maintain the product at various temperatures. Control devices are the part of the electrical system to operate when, where, how, and what will be turned on and off by variable signals. HFC refrigeration systems need to control the temperature, pressure, flow, humidity, and level for comfort of humans, but in refrigeration systems, of course, it is maintaining the product. Even some product will have humidity control, such as uh, aging meat or beef. Thereby, it is necessary to know all possible sequence of operation of a HVAC and refrigeration system. Controls can be binary, which is on and off, analog, which is variable, or integral, 
which is variable and adjusting, controls to give the most efficient control of a HVAC system.